So the reason I uploaded or re-uploaded my video of my reaction to Jeff Durbin and Doug Wilson having a beer is because I wanted you all to be prepared for this video. Uh, now, pertaining to that first video, I gave my reaction to it and I gave my reaction to what I was sent. What I was sent was that short excerpt of the full podcast segment. That's all I had to go on because that's all I was sent. One of my subscribers at the time emailed me and sent me that short clip and he asked me to respond to it or react to it and give my opinion or my take on it. Someone else that he had found the clip from had cut the video up and made that short excerpt, that short clip. And I guess people were, were reacting to it all around the Internet at the time. And so that's what I did. That short clip was being passed around and that's all I had to go on. OK, and so yesterday I get an email from one of my subscribers wanting me to react to Jeff Durbin reacting to that video. OK, I didn't even know that he had reacted or had even seen that video that I made. And so this is all new to me. So thank you, Brandon, for sending me that link to that video. So let's get into it. Let's go ahead and watch Jeff's response to my video. And then after I'll give my take. You're not drinking root beer in there. Then it's like a velvet Merlin because that is some dark beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very dark beer. It's like tar. I mean, there's so much wrong there. You know, again, it's not to it's not to berate this this brother. Um, it's just to say, like, well, here's an example. How do you apply godly wisdom in the internet age? He saw a video. He saw something in my hand. His assumption was that's beer, and then he he went further with the assumption and said he probably drank too much, and that's why he talked in this way. The truth is, the reason why I was talking about that is because it was all over the news. All over the news. And what did I use, even in terms of the, the terminology I used? The technical terminology. And, of course, it's such a weird thing to talk about, and, and we laugh about it at the end, because what a crazy world that we're living in. That we're living in an age where we're actually talking about forcing women to do this to men, strangers. And so the awkwardness of the moment wasn't because anybody had drank too much at all. It's because how crazy is this that we're actually having this discussion? We are as pastors sitting down in the 21st century asking this crazy question. How do you deal with this? There's a man that's demanding that strangers in these salons actually wax his testicles, his genitals. We got to deal with it. You can hide under a rock if you want. Mm. I'm not playing that game. I'm not going to do that. I'm not running from this stuff. I'll talk about it. So first things first, my initial assumption was that Jeff Durbin was amongst friends and was drinking beer. It's quite clear that the other two men were obviously drinking beer. So I just assumed that he was as well. Now, what I learned was that he was actually drinking root beer. So I do apologize for making a false assumption. Now, I'm not a beer drinker, so I don't know all the different types of colors or how beer should look and all that. And you heard them make the joke that that was very dark beer, you know, insinuating that it was obviously root beer. Well, I wouldn't know. OK, but that is indeed exactly why men of God who have a platform should be very careful of how they present themselves to the world. I do believe that the setting for that video was indeed inappropriate. And I stand on that. OK. And had those three men actually been John MacArthur, John Piper, or Paul Washer, the Internet would have exploded. And you know that that's the truth. But because it was the cool pastor, Jeff Durbin, People tend to make excuses. Again, this is not an attack. It's just the truth. Now, what Jeff Durbin should have done is right when he walked up to the table and sat down, he should have let the people watching know immediately that he was indeed drinking root beer. But he didn't do that. So that's why I, along with many other people, thought initially that he was drinking beer with his friends. You know, there's a truth in the saying, birds of a feather flock together. If you walked into a room and you saw a bunch of a bunch of guys sitting on a couch and they were smoking marijuana and you saw me sitting on the edge of the couch, even though I hadn't smoked any of the weed. OK, I hadn't taken a drag of any of it. Right. What would you have thought? What would you have thought if you walked into that room? You're going to think that I'm smoking right along with them. OK, so if you don't want people to make assumptions next time, don't place yourself in a setting in which you are amongst people who are doing exactly what you don't want to be accused of doing. OK, again, I'm not a Speaking against alcohol, I'm speaking against unwise discernment. Now, regarding the comment that was actually made, this is what Jeff said. He said, should we force women to wax men's testicles? Now, what I later found out was that he brought that up because at that time, it was a hotbed topic in the news. First Corinthians 6.12, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. 
Listen, just because there is something going on in the news doesn't mean it's wise for a pastor to address it specifically. Okay, we know that sin abounds, but certain things that are said or repeated can cause sin to abound within the body of Christ. And we don't want that. What Jeff said was sexual by nature. The context was sexual, and it can cause men's minds to drift to a place that could encourage sin, the sin of lust. Okay, now, again, this is just all my opinion. Okay, I love Brother Jeff, and I'm all for his ministry. But just because the brother is older, he's more experienced and may have more gifts than me, does not mean that he is always right. OK, because I know for sure that I'm not always right and that I have a ton of growing and humbling myself to do. OK, so um, I think there's a place to, you know, rebuke and correct men of all ages and experience within the faith. OK, uh, he's not untouchable just because he has a larger platform than me and because he is being used more by God than me. OK, he's not. You know, he's not perfect and neither am I. Okay, I do things are wrong and people have made videos about me as well. So, again, that's that's my position. And that's my take on it.